Usually, it's so quiet in Beverly Hills, you can hear the scratch of a fountain pen on a movie contract three mansions away. But not this mansion. Not today. Behind those gates, in a bed made for Newt Rockney, one of the biggest stars in Hollywood was recovering from what his doctor called a California cold. Hero of the celluloid campus, the rah-rah movie king to end them all, Sonny Wallace himself. Among Hollywood's 400, only a handful rated the full-time attention of Filmland's top medicine man, Dr. Charles William Sutro. Mr. Denny. Quieten those fans again, will you? We keep trying, Doctor. How's the patient, Doc? Is he gonna make the premiere tonight? Patient's fine, Mr. Marlowe. Shouldn't you be out there checking for stray press men? With electric fences? All the news hawks I know can hardly climb onto a bar stool. I was under the impression you're being paid. I check every 15 minutes, Dr. Sutro. I don't want any intruders, Marlowe, press or otherwise. Do I make myself clear? Crystal. ordinary mortal has a head cold and aspirin and an early night are all he gets. Movie stars are not ordinary mortals. Maybe they don't even have ordinary colds. Keep your hands off. That's the way infection spreads. What infection? Nurse Dalton, what infection? lost his appetite. Doctor? Doctor Sutro! Please come quickly! to enter that room. You can drop the act, Sutro. How dare you? I will not tolerate an ignoramus like you interfering in medical matters. The less of your crap will go further, Dr. Sutro. That man's been dead for hours. What's the game? Leave us, Nurse Dalton. You've had your paws come through. Marla, we're both working towards the same end. You're here to provide security backup for the premiere, and I find myself in sole charge of a very delicate situation. I don't know what you're talking about. All I know is it's too long. How long has he been dead? I'm paid by Walden, Marlowe. So are you. I'm not prepared to say anything further. Your questions must be addressed to him. Walden knows? Of course Walden knows. <laughs> I'd been hired to guard dog Sonny by his producer, Derek Walden. One of the biggest wheels this side of Cecil B. to Mill. He'd discovered Sonny Wallace in the USC backfield and built him, grin by grin, into one of the hottest things since Doug Fairbanks. And all that on only three expressions. Looking left, looking right, and looking straight ahead. Well, now he was looking nowhere and in nine hours was due to attend his own premiere. There was something else, too. 
Sonny Wallace's face had been as yellow as a lemon. Suddenly, I felt like I was taking a trip down a sewer in a glass-bottom boat. In the movies, there are only two classes of picture. First class and no class. A series of flops had worn Magnus Studios' balance sheet kind of thin, and they were counting on Sonny's fans to go hog wild and boost their box office. If they were planning on some kind of cover-up until after the premiere, I wanted out. Hollywood's the kind of town where they stick a knife in your back and then have you arrested for carrying a concealed weapon. I drove over to the Kilmarnock and the man who hired me, Derek Walden. To spell out a story of success and tragedy unequaled since the days of Saul Robnitz. It's a unique picture that's going to get the audience where it lives, wherever it lives, out there in the Amazon basin, on the rolling plains in the great nations and cities of the world. That's where they love Sonny Wallace. Sounds like it couldn't survive much improvement. When do we see Sonny? Louisa. <laughs> You'll be first in line. Okay, folks, that's it. Thank you. See you tonight. Do I get the exclusive? What a question. How many column inches? Good guys, what do you want to be? Now that's a good Sutro called me. I suppose you think I owe you an explanation. Yeah? Like how I got voted Idiot of the Year. I don't need histrionics, Marlowe. You were hired to guard a house and keep the press at bay. I'd appreciate it if you get back on the job. I don't stay on cases when I'm not told the facts. You owe me a hundred bucks, a payup. Don't take that high moral tone with me, Marlowe. You were being paid to make a few motions that didn't mean much at a time of great tragedy. A clean job, as far as your racket goes. Now, that's a crack I can do without. But money you can't do without, can you? All I want's what I'm owed. You owe me something else, too. What did he die of? That's none of your damn business. Yeah, you're right. It's a coroner's business. Marlowe, I don't think you understand what's at stake here. Timing is crucial. <laughs> but money is everything. Has a death even been registered? Dr. Sutro's taking care of that. I think you'll find this to your satisfaction. 500? I'd appreciate it if you didn't talk to anyone until after we've made an announcement. You keep it. Buy yourself another column inch. Six to four, Sonny Wallace hadn't died of leprosy, and my guess was he'd been dead before Walden even hired me. By walking out, I'd lost a day's pay, but what the hell. Singh's laundry for some clean shirts and got back to my office around 12.30. The phone was ringing. Marl. I'm listening. I'm sorry I flew off the handle like that, but, well, we've all been under considerable stress here in the last few hours, and, um, after all, we're both in a similar position in this matter. Skip the warm-up suit, throw and speak your piece. Well, I'd like you to come over and see me if you can. Why don't you just say it on the phone? Well, it's a delicate matter, Marlowe. I'd rather tell you in total privacy. Besides, uh, there's something I want to show you. All right, what's your address? It's 201 East Bellevue Drive, you know that? Yeah, all right. Yeah. Okay, I'll see you in about an hour then. All right, bye. For an 
aspirin peddler, Charles Sutro, lived pretty high. In 10 years, the miracle medic of Beverly Hills had built himself a reputation second to none. If you believe the gossip, he could cure anything from delirium tremens to a broken promise. His patients worshipped him, and no intimate party in Hollywood was complete without him. Like a street cleaner after the big parade, Sutro always cleared up the mess at a price. But best of all, no outsiders ever got to hear the details. Thank you for coming, Marlowe. What'd you want to show me? Sonny Wallace's death certificate. I thought you'd like to know why that fit young man died so suddenly. Pneumonic infection? He died of pneumonia? Pneumococcus. Worst example I've seen. Too advanced even for the sulfonamides. If I'd been called earlier, I'd have been able to do Doctor, something. Doctor, I've never seen anyone who died of pneumonia. But I once saw a guy who died of hepatitis. What does that to do with Sonny Wallace? You tell me, they both had yellow skin. Marlo, after death, blood drains the lower part of the body. Was Sonny face up when you saw him? You know he was. What you saw was the normal pallor which results from that, nothing more. This certificate, it doesn't have a signature and there's no date on it. Were you planning on getting a second opinion? No. Why should I? Would you mind if somebody else took a look at the body? Not at all. You want to call another doctor? Go right ahead. No. It won't be necessary. Well, I guess it's my turn to apologize. Don't think any more about it. Drink? No, thanks. I've uh, got some things to do. Well, anytime you need a doctor. Thanks, Doc. Uh, Oh, uh, this is my wife? Mrs. Sutro? Mr. Marlowe is just leaving, dear. Mm. Elizabeth. <laughs> oh, why are you leaving, Mr. Marlowe? We could have a whole lot of fun. Charles wouldn't mind. Would you, Charles? Elizabeth, Mr. Marlowe has to get back to his office. Oh. That's right, Mrs. Sutro, I... Hope we meet again soon. Oh, you bet you're in neck. Nobody comes here just the once. Is that so? That is definitely so. I'll see you out, Marlowe. That's all right. I can find my own way out. Mrs. Sutro? God, Elizabeth, why do you do it? <laughs> because I hate you. Go, Sonny, go, Sonny, go, go, go! Kill him, kill him, go, go, go! Maybe Sutro was telling the truth. And maybe that yellow look was a trick of the light. But in my business, you spend half your time stripping away lies and finding bigger lies underneath. One thing I knew for sure, having a doctor for a husband wasn't helping Mrs. Sutro's particular problem. A case of doctor, heal thy wife. I needed one last look at the face that launched a thousand pigskins, then I'd stop wandering around like a walking question mark and find myself a nice, quiet case. Oh. Like you're taking a powder. The doc said you'd walked off the job. What job? Oh, come on, Phil. It was just a stall. Uh, you knew it was dead, too, huh? Well... Being a studio cop isn't always about watching a bunch of girl extras trying to pinch each other's lipstick, Phil. Yeah. You ought to see some of the screwy things I've seen these past 20 years. Draw me a map sometime. Hey, where are you going? 
Bill, wait a minute. Oh, it's you again. Where is he? They took him away. Kind of figured that. Do you know where? What I was trying to tell you, Phil. Took him out the back way about 12.30 to avoid the fans. Can you remember where or is it too long ago? Don't be like that, Phil. Echo Hill. Archangel Mortuary. Guess he'll lie in state like Valentino. <laughs> Hundred thousand women went to that one. Yeah, thanks, Denny. Campbell's Funeral Parlor in New York. That's where they took Valentino. <laughs> name on Sonny's death certificate had been his real name. Changing it was one of the smartest moves he ever made. I wondered how many kids would have found it irresistible to spend half their lives hollering, go, go, Smolak Wanski. Certainly. Oh, yes. Are you preparing it? No, no, no. The dearly beloved is ready. Ready? Oh, yes. I'd like to see him, if you don't mind. But you are in a hurry. But the name is Marlowe. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. This way, please. This is Mr. Wonski. I was just about to put him on the eternity shelf. How long ago was he cremated? 2.15. Did you have full documentation? Oh, yes, yes, of course. I would never dream of cremation without documentation. <laughs> Thanks. Well, if you wish to buy some flowers for the dearly beloved, we have a shop just around the corner. Wade Walton Wonski, where are you? Good night. got back to Walden's apartment close to 4.30. In a couple of hours, the crowds would start gathering on Hollywood Boulevard for Sonny Wallace's last picture. I wanted this thing ironed out in a hurry, and I wanted it ironed out flat. Well, look what the cat threw up. What are you doing here, Murphy? Sergeant Murphy. I rank sergeant now. I don't hardly talk to P.I.s. Talk to this one. What's going on? Come on inside. Keep your mitts up where I can see them. This happened. Just before you came to collect, smart guy. Save the lip or spit it out straight, Murphy. All right. Exhibit number one. 
You ever try that massive brain of yours on an ordinary conversation? Making about as much sense as a parrot on a drunk. You're all wet, Seamus. I mean, some people might think that you were shaking this guy down. He could have been writing you checks for months. He can't take it no more. He sticks one into himself and he breaks it off. That's nice, Murphy. Now let me try. He wrote me that check this morning and I pushed it right back at him because I didn't like the job he offered. So why'd you come back? To make myself a suspect in something I didn't even know had happened. Because this wasn't a suicide, was it? Oh, educate a poor dumb cop, Marlowe. Did you get around to checking the number on the gun? Or have you only been here all afternoon? What kind of wise guy does a thing like that just before he pumps one into his head? What, you mean the file number? Yeah. Well, we're waiting for you to uh, straighten us out on that, Marlowe. Did you check the inside? We are ahead of you all the way on this small time. Yeah, sure, the number on the inside still there. We put a trace on it 15 minutes ago. So you think it was a kill? If it was a kill, it was a smart alley kill. That was not a professional job. Then you don't need me. Now you hold it. Now just as soon as I finish around here, I want to know all about that job he offered you. I'm in the yellow pages. Be sure you stick around. Oh, uh, who tipped you off to come here? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to find out? God, you are so tough. Mm. Derek Walden had worked his way up from the mailroom to two Academy Awards. He had three new pictures lined up and no reason that I could see to jump off the top of his life. His kind never do, they just can't seem to find the time. Hello again. I'm Mayanne Crail. You're Mr. Marlowe. That's what it says on the door. You have to help me. <laughs> do I know it yet? Derek Walden's dead. How do you know that, Miss Crail? I found him. Come into the office. So tell me. You saw me go in there this morning, didn't you? Go on. We had a fight. What about? Nothing serious. Just a tiff. You're Walden's girlfriend? I work for Magnus, publicity. And? I slammed out. Derek was drinking. He usually does before a premiere. But you went back? Yes, to make sure he was sober. For tonight. And there he was. Take your time. I went home and called the police. I didn't leave my name. And then I realized that you were working for him. So I looked up your address and here I am. Why didn't you leave your name? I guess I panicked. It looked like suicide. But it wasn't. Why not? Derek never owned a gun. The gun was in his right hand. And he was left-handed. How did you know that? So I'm right a check. Okay, Miss Crail. I want you to go home and stay there. I'll call you. What's your number? Marlowe. What does the name Burwine mean to you? B-U-R-W-A-N-D. Burwan? Nothing. Why? The gun number checks? But Sacramento says it was registered under the name of Dart Burwan. Seems he moved to New York. Can't help you. Haven't had a regular supply of Burwans for years now. Look, don't get fresh, pal. I want you down at headquarters at 9 tomorrow. Helen Burwan? Who's she? There's a Helen Burwand who works at the studio. I need her address. The studio records department probably wouldn't give it to an outsider. You think they'd give it to you? I could try. Why don't you do that? My Ann Crail didn't have to check the records office. The studio switchboard had the address I needed right there on her night list. 
course, he said, is there an emergency? I drove Miss Crail back to her apartment and rolled on over to 1454 South Livesey, home of Helen Burwent, the lady with the same name as the owner of the gun that killed Derek Walden. Only these days, Helen Burwent had gone back to using her maiden name, Dalton, Nurse Dalton. Well, well, it's the dick. How about buying a lady a drink? Why not? You get around, don't you? <laughs> yeah, some. <laughs> uh, this your ex-husband, Dart Burwind? Leave that alone. Well, now who could this be? Dr. Sutro auditioning for the part of Charles Lindbergh? What the hell do you want? Where's your husband's gun? A little black automatic he left behind when he left you? I think you're trying to tell me something, Miss Dalton. Like, uh, why you can't afford to live any better. You get out of here, you cheap crosser! Get your filthy hands off me, you lousy fat foot! You keep taking that stuff and they'll throw you into Mendocino for the cure, cold turkey. What did you do with a gun? I just showed you the gate, Flatfoot. And if you don't get out of here in 10 Shut seconds, Shut up, I'll... Snowbird. I want to know who had the gun and tried to file a number off of it. Was it this guy? Huh? What's his name? Gene Harlow. Nice friends you got. This guy stitched to him in my fender. Who is he? Get out before I start yelling rape! In this neighborhood, it wouldn't matter much. One more question. Who supplied the dirty needles that gave Sonny Wallace hepatitis? You? Leave me alone. Sutro? Get off. Or was it this ape? Huh? Cough yourself off. Grails Marlowe, I need your help. Would J.B. Magnus be at the premiere tonight? Of course. A bunch of us are meeting in his office at 7.30. And then we go on over to the theater and... <sighs> I know you said to stay put, but I can't. I'm a Magnus employee, and I have to be at that premiere. Yeah, all right, okay, I'll, uh, I'll take you over the studio a little bit early, but I want you to do something for me. Can you fix it for me to see J.P. Magnus in private? Look, all I need is 10 minutes of his time. It's important. Al Wallace takes a long-term option on the ball. Then he sends an airmail express to Stewart, who signs the receipt for a touchdown to give his team top billing on the scoreboard. Churcher, about to receive the ball, gets a bad pass from center, chases it, but loses 12 yards of precious territory. But the goal is where you find it, and he redeems himself and he passes to Costello, who is across the zero strike with six points under his arm. Roaring back in the second half, Sonny Wallace pounds out yard after yard of football, winding up the game 22 to 7. Good luck in Hollywood, Sonny. We're sure going to miss you here. Come in, Mr. Marlowe. Ms. Crail, explain who you are. Please sit down. 
I have three and one half minutes. You can speak freely. This room is soundproof. This may come as a surprise to you, Mr. Magnus, but Sonny Wallace was... Was a, a drug addict. You're wasting time. Well, my guess is he died of hepatitis. But if he hadn't, the drugs would have killed him in a couple of years anyhow. He wouldn't be the first. Go on. How many stars do you have, Mr. Magnus? Rather less than there are in heaven, I'm afraid. But your next question is how many of them take drugs? And the answer is too many. No, sir. My next question is where do they get it from? And after that, how much does it cost you to cover it all up? All over the world, young people imitate movie stars, Mr. Marlowe. What the stars do, they do. Now, our images on the screen may seem clean enough, but all the time, the morals of Hollywood are more like those of Port Said. Now, it's worth paying a little extra to obscure that fact, don't you think? I can't disagree with you. <laughs> oh, yes, you can. It's the people who work for me who can't. Let's get to the point. You know this man? Riccio Benares, my son-in-law. You want to tell me about it? I gave him a job here as head of security. It's a far bigger job than it sounds. Europe, the Far East, star names crawling all over the globe like ants. They need protection. Riccio exploited them. You fired him? After he broke up with my daughter, yes. But that wasn't why I fired him. Well, he'd gone into business with Derek Walden. They used Walden's yacht to bring in certain cargoes from Ensenada. Snowflakes. Such a delicate name for poison, don't you think? Well, let me come to the nub of the matter. Riccio is small fry. The one I want is the one who controls him, the one who deals out the Black Queens. I get rid of that menace and I'll give you anything within my power. Do we understand each other? You know Walden's dead. How do you think I hold this whole empire together, Mr. Marlowe? I know when an employee of mine changes his socks. <laughs> Where do I find Riccio? Probably with his new girlfriend. Come to my office, I'll show you his file. ladies' room. Now beat it. You heard the lady. Freeze it two bit and everything will be jake. Frisk him, Denny. Sorry, Phil. But you just don't stay told, do you? Who's doing the telling, Denny? Shut up. You're liable to wake up on a pile of dirt, only you won't wake up. Get it? I guess you know Denny from your old days at the studio. Right, Rachel? Keep talking, Seamus. I need the excuse to work you over. Cuff him, Denny. I thought she was just a bodyguard, Phil, but you're a bright guy. 
certainly had me fool. That wouldn't make me bright, Danny. Take him out the back of me. Make sure nobody sees you. These people? 50 cents would button their lip at the St. Valentine's Day massacre. That guy wasn't here. You never saw Denny. You never saw me. When you look in that mirror, you probably won't even see yourself. Get it? How about letting me in on the act? Too late, Phil. Should have kept your head down. I gotta hand it to you, fellas. It's a nice setup. Riccio brings the stuff up from Mexico and Walden's yacht, and Florence Nightingale pushes it around the studios. I'd have said you boys got it made. Say all you like, Gumbiel. You're a dead man. Pull over, Denny. I gotta call the boss. Sutro. Good. You can go ahead now. And Riccio. No more mistakes. They've got Marlowe. Bring the boy down. It seems I have little choice. How much do you want and where do you want it paid? $200,000 each year for the next five years in Mexico City. I will sign Sonny Wallace's death certificate, post date it, and mail it to you direct. And my star's reputations will remain intact? More importantly, the box office will continue to roll in from Sonny Wallace's films, Mr. Magnus, and that's what you really care about in the end, isn't it? The fear that millions of moviegoers will walk away from your ticket windows if a drug scandal leaks out? And make no mistake, I'll leak it if I have to. I don't doubt it, Sutro, not for one moment. So listen very carefully. Over the next few days, Sonny Wallace's cold will get worse. He will contract pneumonia, but the nurse will not recognize the symptoms. I will be in Mexico, and Sonny Wallace will die. His funeral will be colossal, and his ashes will become a shrine. All you have to do is shut your mouth and sign the check. I never want to hear from you again. Yes. Yes, he'll do fine. He should. He was Sonny's double in four movies, weren't you, Chuck? Yeah. Get him ready.
Let's see how the bosses do it. Standing next to me is J.P. Magnus himself. Mr. Magnus, will Sonny Wallace be here tonight? Nothing would please me more. Take the weight off your feet, Snoop. Why is he still under the dark? You're all washed up. everything under control. There's a rumor it's more serious than a cold. Would you care to comment? I never listen to rumors. Excuse me. Mr. Movies himself, J.P. Magnus. And now Clark Gable's arriving. Clark Gable, everybody, here to lend his support to a young man who's fast becoming one of his biggest rivals. A typical Hollywood gesture. There's something warm and generous about movie people. Something big-hearted, clean, and pure. An inspiration to this great nation of ours and an example to the world. And here comes Melanie. Yes, it's Melanie Chase, co-star with Sonny Wallace in three movies and one of the hottest properties in Tinseltown today. Oh, I wish you folks at home could see this. Melanie Chase looking every inch a star as she steps out of her limousine into a solid wall of cheering fans and poses for those freshmen. And the crowd's really turning it on here tonight for the first ever showing of Varsity Day. Over a year in the making and the biggest picture Sonny Wallace has made so far. The youth of America's really got something to shout about and they're sure letting the world know it here tonight. And throw him the pigskin and do his wave. Inside, turn sharp left. The nurse will get you back to the house and pay you off. You understand all that? Yeah. Varsity Days, ladies and gentlemen. Only the fifth film Sonny Wallace has made. And already there's one report of a dozen girls waiting in line outside the theater in New York where the picture doesn't even open for three days. Screen columnist Louisa Malcroft told me today that this is only the beginning for Sonny Wallace and Magnus Studios. A partnership that has blossomed over just five movies to bring much needed prosperity to the Magnus lot here in Hollywood. I'll get ready then. And there's a familiar limousine out there on the boulevard and yes, yes it is! The man of the moment, Sonny Wallace himself, the doctor reading the super And the for one of America's favorite sons, and wait a minute, this is really something. All the Sonny's co-stars are coming onto the red carpet outside the theater, right into a football hall as they sit around on the sidewalk and just listen to those fans. Go, Sonny, go. That's what they're yelling here tonight for Sonny Wallace, America's clean living hero of the silver screen, as his team go into a flying wedge and charge right into the theater. Oh, boy, is this Hollywood. The kids out here will remember this night for a long, long time, and so will we. This is Richard Billington outside the Finnsburg Theater for KPRC from the heart of Hollywood. And now the music of Butch Mason, bringing us up to news time here on KPRC, the Station of the Stars. Schmuck and bring him out to the roadway. What do you got in mind, Richard? The boss can drop him out over the ocean. Wait a minute. I thought this was just a laugh at the premiere. Nick's on that, baby. You want to let him go so he can finger us? I didn't contract for no strong arm play. Well, you're crazy as hell. Go back there and stay with him. Let's go, Phil. Oh, Phil, what the hell are you doing? Put that damn thing down. Sorry, Denny. Thought I was in for trouble. 
Guess you're right at that. He's gonna drop you over the ocean. Who is, Danny? The boss. Is that him now? She warmed up? Yeah, we got a problem. What problem? Marlowe. Denny doesn't want him croaked. I'll take care of Denny. Get the suitcase. Sure. I'm gonna have to leave you behind, Elizabeth. I need the space for an unexpected passenger. Contact. Contact. It was Riccio who scratched out the number on Nurse Dalton's gun, then shot Derek Walton to keep him quiet. And it was Sutro who got careless with the needles and ended a star's career. But it was Mrs. Sutro they put away into Hatchaby. 
and they called her temporarily insane. Sometimes I wonder why they don't leave the crazy people alone and send the wagon for the rest of us. Mm -hmm. 